Welcome to the Mozilla Pootle demo. In this demo we're visiting some of the features of Pootle, including translating, making suggestions, and reviewing suggestions. We won't be looking at any of the admin functionality or some of the more specialized applications. Currently we are on the front page of Pootle where you can see all the current languages that are available for translation on the server. You can also see a list of projects that we may translate as a translator. We'll be translating the Mozilla Demo project during our demonstration. There are two languages that are enabled. The first is Afrikaans and the second French. You can see the current translation status in the table. We use word counts instead of strings as this gives a better indication of the amount of work that a translator needs to do. We can see the counts for translated messages, fuzzy and untranslated items. At the right you can see a graph which makes it easier to see the status of how much work still needs to be done. The table itself can be sorted um, on any of the fields. So if we sort on language we can sort it ascending or descending. Let's begin by doing some translations in Afrikaans. The first thing you'll notice is that the first three files that we're, that we're working with are a DTD file, a properties file, and an any file. All of these are used within Mozilla um, and these would have been pre-processed from Mozilla sources by the Poodle administrator, um, protecting the the translator from understanding the compl complexities of any of these formats. To begin translating, we click on the show editing functions. The interface looks quite cluttered, which it is, we'll admit that, um, but after a while people get quite used to using it, and when you understand the basic layout, it's quite easy to work your way around. The first thing to see is the grey bar at the top we call the navigation bar, which allows you to do ac take actions on all the files and all the directories in the current view or you can take action on any one of the individual items listed. You'll notice at the top it says that we have five files there are two out of twelve words have translated or sixteen percent. Uh, we also give the other statistics which is two out of nine strings need to be translated. In each of the rows you can see a number of editing functions. For now we're only interested in quick translation. This allows us to step through the first the files visiting only strings that need attention. Let's translate the DTD file using quick translate. Now we're in the translation mode. In translation mode we have the original text or the source text on the left. The word that we need to translate is file. On the right hand side you'll see the editing widget. We can go back to a previous translation. We can skip this translation. We can copy the text from from the original to the translation like this. We can make a suggestion or we can submit the translation. We're going to translate this into Afrikaans. The Afrikaans word for file is lar, although not quite correct. I've missed out a diacritic. In my case, I don't have a, I don't have the correct key on the keyboard, so I can make use of of this feature to add characters that I might not have on a keyboard if I'm using a keyboard that doesn't support my language. Now we're ready to submit this first translation. So we press the submit button and we get this kind of message. And we're done. We've translated our first string. If we go back to the statistics, we can see that this file is now fully translated. For the next for the next files that we'll translate we'll go through using the navbar's quick translate. 
This way we're going to go through every single file. So now we're translating the any file and I'll translate this into Afrikaans and submit it. This entry we're not so sure about so we can turn this into a suggestion. We put our translation in and we mark it as a suggestion. Now we are into the next file, properties file. And you'll notice that to the translator we just step through individually and they didn't have to worry about opening new files. What you'll notice on the right is that our, our system is given a suggestion of how to translate the word file. This one's correct, so we simply click on here and we can use that translation. Let's submit that. The same for edit. We have a suggestion and it's correct, so we can select that and, and press submit. The advantage of doing something like this is that we can define terminology in a separate terminology file and ensure consistency across all translations and across multiple um, translators. This one we'll do manually and add the word ansach. Now remember we made a suggestion early on and you can see it here in the NEPO file we've only translated half of it so let's go and review these suggestions. Now you might want to use suggestion mode for two reasons. The first would be to allow, if you're uncertain about a translation, and allow someone else to review it. Or you could expose all your translations to the wider community to allow them to make corrections, almost like reporting a bug. So we'll click on review suggestions, and you'll notice that the current translation is empty, which it was. We had no translation before, and our suggestion was the word Twerda, and we think that's correct, so we'll accept it. And if we go back to our statistics, we notice that everything is now translated. The next thing we want to show to you is the checks that we can do. For this, we're going to look at the French translations, and if we go into the French translation. We show the editing functions again and now we enable the checks. You'll notice that we have a number of checks that are failing. The first one, when there's one failure, is for double quoting. There's one failure for capitalization and there are six untranslated messages. We want to check the problems with double quoting. So if we click on the actual test, it will bring up the entry. We'll notice that there is, at first, that this looks correct. There are two double quotes there, and there are two double quotes there. But in French quoting, we should actually be using this character. So let's quickly correct it, submit our change, and if we go back to the statistics, you'll notice that we no longer have an error occurring here. So our, our correct error correction module is able to detect language-specific um, errors, so you can define methods that would be related to the grammar and syntax of the language, um, or methods that relate to the actual application, so we can detect Mozilla variables, etc., and ensure that people don't translate them. That's all for our demo now. Um, we've shown you how to translate, we've shown you how to make a suggestion, and we've shown you how to use the review suggestion mode and some of the checks. What we haven't shown you is any of the admin features, how to add users, delete users, and add projects, and also some of the more advanced features um, in translation where we can define goals and add various people to the goals. But this should be enough to get you going.